comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. People really don't like it when you mispronounce words. Trust me, as someone who has spent a large majority of their YouTube career mispronouncing words, I know just how angry people can get about it. When I inevitably mispronounce a word, it normally results in the same thing. A handful of angry comments, people telling me I shouldn't be talking about names because I can barely say them, and some people unsubscribing to the channel. It's annoying, sure, and these days, despite what it might sound like, I try my best to say words correctly. But at the end, of the day, I'll live. Unfortunately, that's not something everyone throughout history has been fortunate enough to be able to say. There was an event in history where a mispronunciation would get you in a lot more trouble than just an angry comment or two. The mispronunciation of a certain word would have in fact cost you your life. I'm of course talking about the Parsley Massacre. This is something I've seen referred to as the 20th century's most forgotten massacre, which is completely understandable. This was an event I had no idea about until I watched a BBC documentary which discussed it briefly. This massacre played out across early October 1937, not even 100 years ago. It took place on the island of Hispaniola. This is of course the island in the Caribbean which in these modern times is home to the nations of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. This massacre itself seems to have been played out across the borders of these two nations, with a large amount of it happening in the north of the island slash the Dominican Republic's northwest region. This massacre was initiated by the then US-backed dictator of the Dominican Republic, Rafael Cholio. His rise to power began when he was a guard at a sugarcane plantation while the nation was occupied by the USA. When the USA left the nation in 1924, he quickly rose through the ranks, becoming the head of the armed forces in the nation. By 1930, he easily toppled a caretaker president, which kicked off his 30-year dictatorship of the nation. Among things he did during his time in power included naming various mountains and cities after himself, and gave himself the title of Great Benefactor of the Nation and Father of the New Dominion. Unsurprisingly, he was quite a racist person too, especially in regards to his neighbouring nation of Haiti, despite the fact he actually had Haitian ancestry. Supposedly, he even caked himself in makeup to hide a somewhat darker skin complexion he had due to his Haitian grandmother. This was during the late 1930s, which was a time of extreme turmoil and racial prejudice, especially with what was happening in Europe at the time. The turmoil in Europe gave Trujillo something of a green light to do something with his own horrendous views in his nation. Haiti and the Dominican Republic have had something of a complex relationship. Despite sharing an island, the two nations are very different, from different languages to different cultures to different standards of living. Even to this day, the Dominican Republic is seen as a highly developed country, while Haiti is still seen as being a low developed country, according to the Human Development Index anyway. These poor relations came to a boiling point in 1937. Trulia wanted all Haitians living in his nation gone, and I'm not just saying out of his country gone, I mean gone gone. There are more reasons than just his own racist views however in regards to what caused this massacre. There are believed to be multiple reasons as to what caused it. One theory is that Trujillo wanted to claim more land from Haiti for his own nation, with the aim to eventually have the entire island under the rule of the Dominican Republic. Another idea is that he was annoyed by people coming from Haiti to work in the Dominican Republic and taking jobs away from natives. The they're coming over here and taking our jobs mentality isn't a new thing. Others think it might have been because of people leaving the Dominican Republic to live in Haiti to plot revenge against him, and he wanted to squash this rebellion. And finally, some think it was simply because without the USA occupying the land as it had in previous years, it simply meant that Trulio could get away with doing something he had always wanted to do. No one of these reasons are the sole reason as to why he started these massacres. It was just one of those terrible moments in history where the stars aligned for all the wrong reasons. Initially, however, he just deported Haitians and tightened up border control. However, people from Haiti kept on finding a way into his nation. By the 2nd of October 1937, he had had enough. It was on the evening of this day, while drunk at a party being held in his own honour, that Rafael Trujillo gave orders for a solution to the Haitian problem. 
this is the day that the Parsley Massacre is seen as truly starting on, and it will continue for six more days, ending on the 8th of October 1937. Now it's probably about time we talk about the name of this massacre, the Parsley Massacre. What has a cooking herb got to do with the killing of thousands of people on an island in the Caribbean Sea? Well, this name is all to do with the aforementioned mispronunciation. Supposedly, there was a very specific way in which troops from the Dominican Republic would figure out if someone was Haitian or not and kill them amongst all the chaos and killing happening during these six days. Also, I say supposedly, as despite how well documented and known all of this is, some historians believe that was actually a myth. But anyway, the Dominican Republic troops would keep in their possession a sprig of parsley and show it to people. They would then ask people what exactly the thing they were holding was called. Now, as I mentioned, different languages are spoken in Haiti and the Dominican Republic. The official language of the Dominican Republic is Spanish. And the Spanish word for parsley is perejil. This is of course a word that is pretty easy to say for the majority of Spanish speaking people. Haiti however does not speak Spanish. The official language of the land is French, but what is more widely spoken here is the Haitian Creole, which is based off of French as well as other languages like English, native Caribbean languages, and even languages from West Africa. Saying the word perejil proved to be a lot more challenging for people from Haiti. This was for a couple of reasons. First off, they simply didn't speak Spanish, so this was a word they had no idea about. However, even if they did know what the Spanish word for parsley was, saying it was a different challenge entirely. Different languages make completely different sounds, with many sounds being somewhat exclusive to their language. This includes using letters to represent different sounds in different languages too. The sound of the word Purihil wasn't really capable of being made by native Haitians. As Wikipedia puts it, the Haitian languages, French and Haitian Creole, pronounce the R as an uvula approximate or voice vela fricative, respectively, so their speakers can have difficulty pronouncing the avolia tap or the avolia trilla of Spanish, the language of the Dominican Republic, which in more layman terms means in the Haitian Creole, the R in Pulihil would sound more like a W, and they would pronounce this word something like Piwahil. This is exactly how the Dominican Republic troops would figure out if someone was Haitian or not. They would hold up the parsley and ask them to say the word for it. And if they said it wrong, they meant they were from Haiti, and that gave them the go-ahead to kill. Suffice to say, this is absolutely awful. Perhaps the worst consequence of mispronouncing a word in human history. This could have resulted in the deaths of way more than just Haitians, however. It could have affected Dominicans with speaking issues, or kids who haven't learnt the word yet. Some Haitians may have even been spared if they could figure out how to say this word correctly. Of course, during this barbaric massacre, Julio and his men didn't really care if a few Dominican kids got killed along the way. This was a cleansing of people, clear and simple. This use of the Spanish word for parsley to find out if someone is Haitian or not is actually part of a wider custom in language known as a shibboleth. I found a source which described a shibboleth as a kind of linguistic password. It's when we use a specific pronunciation or phrase that one group of people would know but another wouldn't be as clued up on. Using shibboleths allow people to easily and somewhat discreetly figure out who should be a part of a group and who shouldn't be. They are not always used for evil however as it was during the parsley massacre. They can simply be used to figure out if someone is a local or not, like asking someone to pronounce the letter Z and how that can help dictate if they are American or British. Wikipedia has a whole list of them, though unfortunately many do relate to war and persecution. With this horrendous way of figuring out who to kill or not, Julio's men got to work swiftly, executing anyone who was unable to say Pure Hill. After six days of slaughtering, the dust finally settled and thousands had been killed. We aren't sure on the exact number of fatalities during this massacre, but the numbers range from 12,000 to 35,000 deaths. This was pretty much the entire Haitian population living in the Dominican Republic at the time. One really more morbid name related fact to all this relates to where much of the killing took place. A lot of this killing took place in the banks of a river that weaves between Haiti and the 
the Dominican Republic. This river is called the Dahabon River, but is more commonly referred to as the Massacre River. Many were killed next to this river, with bodies dumped in it to drift away. You might think that this river acquired this name because of the Parsley Massacre, but here's the thing, this river actually already had this name. It's believed that in the early 18th century, another massacre took place here. This time, however, it was between the French and Spanish themselves, while they were still fighting over this island. 30 French buccaneers were supposedly killed next to this river by the Spanish, leading it to having this name. It would be just over 200 years later when another horrid massacre would be happening by this river. Like I said, Haiti and the Dominican Republic have a long, complex history. It's wonderful of ups and downs and of course they have come closer in recent times. There's even a yearly border of lights commemoration between the two nations held in honour of those lost during this massacre. The killings that took place between the 2nd and 8th of October 1937 on this island are atrocious, and how they figured out who should be killed is horrific. Words and pronunciations are hard. I and many other people struggle with saying words even from their own native language, let alone words from languages they don't even speak. I can only begin to imagine the pain and fear this mispronunciation brought unto people. Next time I mispronounce a word, Word and people get annoyed at me about it, I'm just going to be thankful that my life isn't on the line. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.